Hangzhou, the home of goldfish breeding in China, has the country's most varied collection of goldfish. Some of the local residents keep Crucian carp in ponds at their homes. The Crucian carp is the ancestor of the goldfish. Fuzhou, a city 700 kilometers south of Hangzhou, is another major producer of goldfish. Over 80% of the best goldfish China exports originate in Fuzhou. Like in Hangzhou, there's no longer a goldfish farm in Fuzhou's urban area. The last goldfish farm was moved from there in October 2010. <laughs> 刚开始这条马路是沙子的马路，很窄很小的，现在就是已经拓展到这么大了，城市的变化非常非常大。六点钟从家里走，每天都是这样子。六点差不多十分十五分钟就就到渔场了，等于一年的三百六十五天了，都
他说红白等于你要挑的话，挑多少遍都都不为过。红白这个地位哈，变成红白颜色，它分布红白颜色的分布还有不一样的。比如说两边要对称，胸鳍、臀鳍、尾鳍，啊，背鳍都是红的，呃，就是十二指红，那就是在红白蝶舞里面，它算是比较算真平的。In the second screening of the 30-day-old baby multicolored big-headed goldfish, the purpose is to determine what color they will become. Five colored orchid goldfish have become very popular on the goldfish market in recent years. Ye Chi Chung focuses on the curves of their bodies. For a goldfish keeper, there's no greater happiness than to find an extraordinarily beautiful goldfish. Strict elimination is the best way to ensure the quality of the goldfish being bred. During April and May, the goldfish fry grow. A layer of a crimson ribbon-like substance appears on the water surface. It disappears in June after the fry have grown into adults. As long ago as the Southern Song Dynasty, 800 years ago, goldfish keepers realized the benefits of this substance for goldfish to feed on. It's formed of water fleas, a kind of tiny crustacean. Normally, they inhabit the bottom of ponds, but they come up to the water surface in the early morning when there's not enough oxygen in the water. The goldfish keepers have to be ready at 5 o'clock in the morning before the first streak of sunlight appears to catch the tiny creatures. It's an exhausting job. By 8 o'clock, Ye Chi Chang has only half filled his bucket. It's far from enough to feed all the goldfish fry. The farther away the process is from natural evolution, the more difficult it is to raise the goldfish. The hour from 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning is the most dangerous time for the goldfish. This is when they are most susceptible to hypoxia. The goldfish keepers must get up and go to the ponds to see if the goldfish are manifesting any abnormal behavior. In recent years, large numbers of tropical fish, Japanese koi carp, and other exotic fish have appeared on the Chinese market. This has made life hard for China's own breeders, as the goldfish market has shrunk. Professor Wang Chun Yuan from the Institute of Hereditary under the Chinese Academy of Sciences has studied the genetics of goldfish for many years. He argues that the fall in the number of large goldfish farms in China will lead to a disastrous degeneration of goldfish varieties. Nature provides the material from which the goldfish keepers create works of art. But how long can these living works of art continue to exist? No one can answer this question. Even after Ye Chi Chung's farm moved to the remote county of Minqing, people still flock to admire his goldfish. 
Many of them are young people in their 20s and 30s. Sometimes, Ye Chi Cheng gives his goldfish away. He thinks that every goldfish he gives to someone represents another chance for its variety to be preserved. We, each life's the Chinese characters for fish and abundance are homophonic. Fish have a special place in Chinese hearts. But for the beautiful goldfish to survive in all their varieties will require continuing hard work from the dedicated breeders. It's a handicraft that brings together precious raw materials and highly complex workmanship. Filigree inlaying was used in creating some of the most precious items owned by emperors and their concubines. There are craftsmen today who create replicas of these old treasures. But do the ancient filigree skills lend themselves to producing more modern works of art? Find out in Filigree Inlay, part of our unique handicraft series.